Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to another QDB uh, Proxy School webinar. Uh, in today's webinar, I'm going to uh, show you some of the latest features uh, which have been added to QDB Proxy School, like declarative uh, declarative configuration, reconfiguring of request, uh, horizontal scaling, and some others. So, in the table of content, you can see uh, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, and finally, there is a Q&A session. If you have any question, uh, we would uh, try to answer them in that session. And um, yeah, in this uh, slide, you can see all the resources uh, from where you can uh, get to know about KubeDB and KubeDB Proxy SQL uh, in a documented way, and also uh, the apps code documentations. And from here, uh, this is the installation uh, procedure or installation commands uh, using which you can install kubedb uh, in your uh, cluster so let's dive into the discussion before actually jumping into the demonstration i uh, today i will actually explain all the concepts uh, i'm going to demonstrate first so first of all uh, what is declarative configuration so what is the thing that we are actually calling the declarative configuration in kubedb proxy sql Let's begin. Uh, if you are a proxy SQL user, you may know that when you are trying to bootstrap your proxy SQL, you need to pass a configuration file. And that configuration file is known as the proxy SQL.cnf. And in that, proxy, uh, in that proxy SQL.cnf configuration file, uh, you have to provide the configurations regarding admin variables, MySQL variables, MySQL query rules. And also, uh, you can configure MySQL users through this. MySQL servers, proxy SQL servers, and a lot of things. So uh, before, uh, in the previous version of kubedb proxy SQL, if you wanted to pass a configuration file uh, to actually bootstrap the proxy, proxy SQL with that, you may have to create a secret first, mount all the uh, mount this proxy SQL CNF inside that secret, and then report the secret into the our proxy SQL YAML, and only then our uh, pro, our keep developer would uh, bootstrap the proxy SQL server with your provided configuration. But we thought uh, to make it simple with some declarative configurations, like we uh, we are allowing user to pass all the configuration uh, configurations in the uh, in the YAML. And eventually, you would see how to do that. So to actually execute the uh, whole concept, we have introduced two new, um, two new fields in the proxy SQL API, uh, QDB proxy SQL API. One is the init config, and another one is the config secret. So we would eventually see what, uh, what are there in the init config and the config secret. So. As for the init config, we have divided the init config into four fields. One is the MySQL user, uh, admin variables, MySQL variables, and the MySQL query rules. So from uh, this, uh, this slide, you can easily pick that. We are allowing, allowing you to configure uh, only these four tables or these four fields uh, from our uh, QD proxy SQL YAML. And as for the config secret, you can mention the name. Uh, uh, you can mention the name of the configuration secret. Uh, uh, like, if you have a secret like this, which consists of these keys, and uh, every configuration is mentioned under these keys in that secret. And if you mention this secret name in the config secret section, the proxy school would uh, read the. Um, the, our keep the operator would read the configurations from the secret, uh, merge it with our default values, and then uh, come up with a final configuration file, and then proxy SQL server would bootstrap using that. So we would see how exactly does it happen uh, in the upcoming slides. So suppose uh, you have a configuration like this. Uh, if you are a proxy SQL native user, you are, I think you are familiar with this uh, type of configuration. And uh, you want to actually provide this configuration 
when the proxy skill bootstraps. But uh, in a QTB native way, all you have to do is just uh, fill up the init config uh, section in this way. Here you can see uh, you wanted to give two users. Uh, we have uh, we are allowing a user array in the init config dot mysql user section. And as for the mysql variables and the admin variables, just put the uh, just copy the name here, uh, put it here, and replace the equal sign with the with this colon. And our QDB operator would uh, read that, recognize that, and come up with a final configuration file. This is this uh, in the same way you can configure admin variables as well. And uh, as you know that MySQL query rules is also a table like MySQL users. So uh, you should put the MySQL query rules information in the way I have uh, put the MySQL users here. So uh, you can also, uh, I have already shown that you can uh, put your configuration from YAML and as well as from the secret. But uh, the YAML is uh, YAML gets the more uh, pref precedence than the secret, and if we found uh, no data or no configuration to the YAML of the secret, then we would put something default uh, with uh, default from the KubeDB operator, and we would eventually see what are the default values that KubeDB operator actually sets. So, okay, uh, let's move on. So this is the default configuration for MySQL variable table, which kubedb actually sets when it bootstraps the proxy as well. So now, suppose you want to add uh, some more variables, for some more fields here, or you want to edit any of the fields here, like. You are okay with everything, but you want to change the stack size. You want to change the connect timeout server. You want to change these two variables. So uh, like this, you want to set the values to these. Or if you wanted to set any other variable that is not present in this list, you would also you can also mention it in the YAML. So now here's the thing. You want to edit this four field, and you have mentioned these uh, four fields in your YAML, and the final configuration the operator would come up with is something like this. So you may wonder that uh, you wanted to set four fields, but uh, there's my monitor username and monitor password is uh, not set with uh, your uh, your desire. So what is the thing here? The Actual thing is, uh, you can set up every variable uh, from the declarative YAML, but except these six. Uh, there are some reasons, uh, uh, basically speaking, QBB operator to actually run the QBB operator smoothly and all the uh, operations. There are some dependencies on these six uh, variables actually. So we are we prefer that you don't configure this. That's why we uh, we have selected these as the reserved variables, and uh, you should not, and we don't let you edit these uh, variables. And other things you can edit, and also if you want to add more variables, you can do that. So this is the basic uh, or default uh, default setup for the MySQL variables. And here you can see the default uh, setup for the admin variables that you give up the sets. And these two are the reserved fields here. And as for the MySQL group replication host group, this is not configurable from the YAML or the secret. Uh, actually, this is not configur configurable by the user. So this is the default value we provide. And as for the MySQL query rules, we provide these as the default. If you don't give any uh, value, we would bootstrap our proxy skill with this. And if you give uh, any single MySQL query rule, then none of them would be applied and your provided one would be uh, taken as the source of truth. So finally, after reading everything from the secret and from the MySQL uh, and from the YAML, what KubeDB operator would come up with a final configuration secret using which our proxy SQL, final proxy SQL server would bootstrap. 
and this would be the ultimate source of truth whatever uh, uh, configuration you provide like probably you have provided some admin variables provided you have uh, provided some MySQL query rules and these two fields you haven't touched them but finally with some defaults and some from your provided uh, configuration if the web partner merges this all and finally come up with something like this and this is uh, um, always present in the cluster and you can take it as the source of truth for your proxy school configuration except the proxy school server and the mysql server section so uh, in case of any obsequious applied any changes uh, made to any obsequious um, this would also uh, this config secret would also get updated so yes uh, i'm repeating it again this is the only source of truth so that was it for the declarative configuration concept. Uh, later, uh, later we would see in the demonstration how it really works. Uh, I guess that would be better to understand. Now I would talk about the sync user thing. So what is the sync user thing? Suppose you have a MySQL server running and as usual, you, you have a kubedb proxy SQL server running. So in the MySQL uh, server, you know that there's a user stable and in the proxy school server there's a mysql users table so uh, when the sync user is enabled in the proxy school spec what it does is it always creates a, or keeps a, a synchronization between the mysql backend and the proxy school uh, proxy school mysql users table like uh, let's take an example Suppose in some moment, MySQL users got three user entered in that server. If the sync user is enabled, the proxy school server would uh, see a change in its MySQL users table. Suppose uh, in some moment, the password for user two has been updated. The sync user uh, is enabled and the kubedb operator would update the password in the proxy school server as well and in case of deletion of some user it would also be reflected in the proxy school server so that means uh, the basic thing is when you enable sync user what happens is every change in the mysql server uh, regarding mysql users would definitely reflect on the proxy school server end we would see the demonstration uh, we would see the uh, we'll see the details in the demonstration later. So now comes uh, for the obsequest. And before I actually uh, tell you what are the obsequest you are supporting for keep due proxy SQL, let's introduce you to what is obsequest. So in short, obsequest is just uh, requesting change operation in a declarative way. Like you want to change some configurations of proxy SQL and you don't want to do it in uh, like you don't want to log into that console and then change it and do blah 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 uh, it, what you can do is in kubedb native way you can just uh, simply press an uh, obsequest uh, like reconfigure obsequest for changing some admin variables or changing anything uh, anything means obviously that only we support and it would take effect and also it uh, keeps a record um, in a, a, a in a YAML way, so with a YAML, so th this is obviously declarative. Uh, okay, we we would see what it actually is in the demonstration later. But uh, before that, we just uh, if you are familiar with obsequest, I just want to mention that for keep view proxy SQL, we are supporting horizontal scaling and reconfigure obsequest uh, uh, currently. Okay, so let's jump into the demonstration. First of all, what I would do is deploy a proxy skill with uh, this newly introduced declarative configuration. Okay, so in this YAML, uh, you can see that mm, I, I want to, um, okay, first of all, let me uh, tell what is my motto. My motto is to uh, insert or bootstrap the proxy skill with, with this user, the user one. Um, yeah, I am okay with other uh, default values uh, that keep you provides, but I, I want to change these two variables in the admin variable section. 
also i want my proxy sql to bootstrap with these two mysql variables other values are uh, should be kept default as the kubeview provides and and for mysql query rules i want these query rules uh, to be applied when the proxy sql is started so what i can do is i can just uh, put these uh, values in the corresponding init config sections like in the init config.mysql user section i have mentioned the uh, mention one user here uh, i i want this user to be active and the default host group to be two if i want other fields to be set up uh, like you know in the proxy sql you can also uh, just mention this uh, here, uh, right here and it would uh, eventually read it and as for the admin variables uh, you can see how i have uh, mentioned them and uh, another thing is uh, i want to uh, mention other uh, configurations like mysql variables and the mysql query rules from the secret so i have made a secret like this you can see this is a secret spec uh, secret yaml and please look at the uh, keys carefully and because you if you misspell this key and these are case sensitive obviously then uh, there would be some problem with the bootstrapping so i have mentioned uh, the configurations in the corresponding keys and also i have mentioned the secret name in the config secret dot name section so what my kubedb operator would do that for mysql users it would take this configuration for admin variables it would patch these two variables uh, with the defaults and as for the mysql uh, mysql variables it would take it from the secret and for the mysql query rules it would take it from the secret as well and then bootstrap everything so okay uh, let's now apply this uh, this is my uh, workstation currently this is the mysql server and mysql in the mysql server you can see all the users are there okay uh that's not our case right now um okay so yes we can see that uh the exact same mm -hmm, exact same yaml is there mm, let's uh see the view secret okay you can see uh the secret i i, I mentioned in the slide here you can see the secret is there okay so now let's apply okay so you can see that uh, the ports are coming up one by one and there's the uh, our target configuration configuration secret here let's let's view it let's see, view secret. okay so you can see here that uh, uh look uh these are not the default values these are the values that we provided from the secret and as for the mysql user you can see that uh it read the username from uh, the yaml and then uh it entered uh, other data as per mentioned in the yaml and for the mysql variables or the admin variables the admin variables you can see yes it has been configured as mentioned in the yaml and these are the this is the second variable which we mentioned in the in the yaml so it looks like it is actually bootstrap with whatever configurations we actually wanted and okay one thing you may wonder that where that password came from uh, i didn't mention the password in uh, in the yaml but uh, there you can see a password is there so it is it's a thing that uh, we have made it easy for the users like if you uh, have to uh, provide the password as well from from the yaml there are some security concern so we thought that you don't need to mention that if if this user is already present in the mysql backend then the password will, will automatically by automatically fetched by kubedb operator and if it is not uh, there and you you really want to provide with password then you should uh, put this configuration in the secret uh, like this and then uh, the security concern would be no longer be there 
okay so that's it that uh, the main thing is you don't want to uh, you don't have to mention the password when you are configuring it from the secret uh, from the yaml okay so uh, this is the configuration uh, configuration in the secret you can see uh, let's see it in the uh, actual server Um, uh, what should we do? Let's let's see the user. Okay, so you can see here. Uh, it's been uh, it, it is there, and oh, other uh, other other variables or other things. Uh, we're just skipping it for now. You can check it on your own. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now, one thing uh, I want to show you that uh, now I, I want to show you the sync user thing. Uh, here you can see that the MySQL backend has uh, a lot of user uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, user one, user two. Now I want uh, I want these all these users in my proxy SQL server. And what I told you before that uh, just um, just turn on the sync user and all the users should uh, come automatically like you be operator. So let's see the current uh, state. Uh, none of the users are here except user one. Now let's bring it uh, bring all here. So let's change the sync user value from false to true. The process is configured. Okay, so now you can see uh, all the users have been fetched from the backend MySQL, and uh, you may uh, you may wonder why is uh, MySQL session MySQL dot sys are not here. These are some system users that uh, we are not actually interested about it. Uh, there's no uh, nothing to do from uh, proxy SQL server with these uh, users so we have just ignored them and the other others we have copied we have fetched it from the mysql backend okay so uh, that was it for for the sync user and and uh, we can change the password and definitely the password uh, password change would definitely reflect in the proxy SQL end as well uh, we are just skipping it for now you can check it on your own now what we would do is um, we would change these values or we would reconfigure our proxy school configuration with the ops requests uh, which is the most interesting part so before doing that uh, let's turn off the sync user first Okay, so probably the sync user is turned off. Let's uh, delete user A. Okay, I have the query written down. Uh, I have the query written down here. Let's just copy it and paste it, save some time. Okay. Okay, so now user A and user B doesn't exist anymore. If sync user was turned on, then it would again come up. So, okay, uh, why we have deleted user A and B, you would uh, eventually get to know or get to understand it, whatever. Now, we are willing to reconfigure our proxy skill, because specifically reconfigure our proxy skill users. And we have three of requests here. Uh, first of all, this of request is, um, a reconfigure type and in the reconfigure type uh, we have a, a section called configuration in the configuration you would uh, set the configurations uh, new configurations you actually want okay so here are actually two types one is reconfigure variables and one is reconfigure tables from proxy sql end like you know that MySQL users and MySQL query rules are 
tables, not variables like admin variables or uh, MySQL variables. So uh, for MySQL user or MySQL query rule, there should be a request type. Like you can, uh, um, you can apply three types of operations. One is add user or add query rule. One is the delete user or delete query rule. And the third one is the update. What we want to do currently is uh, we want to add these two variables, two users. We want to delete these two users and we want to update these two users information in the proxy SQL server. You can see the pattern. I have mentioned uh, everything. To better understand, you can refer to the doc. Now let's apply and see what the changes are. And one thing I know I want to mention that, as you know, this is the, uh, the MySQL user is a table and MySQL query rule is also a table. For MySQL users, if you want to add or edit or delete anything, the reference should be the username. And as for the MySQL query rules, the reference should be the rule ID. If you are familiar with proxy SQL, probably you have got the point. So now let's apply it. And before applying it, let's uh, see the current state. Select so username, um, active. Okay, you can see that uh, you can see that um, for every user, the uh, active part is uh, set to one and the default host group is set to two. So now let's see what are uh, the obstacles going to do. Obstacles is going to add user A and B, delete user C and D, and update the default host group uh, of user E and F to three. Uh, currently it is two and also make the user e uh, inactive and okay so yes let's let's uh, let's see okay i have written down it in a single file and now let's apply it shift uh, reconfig okay so you can see that the uh, two of the obstacles has been successful. You can check. Okay, so the one thing is uh, user E and user F uh, has been updated. The information of user E and F has been updated. And as for the user uh, C and user D, this is uh, deleted. And okay, we can see the third one is also successful. Now let's check it again. So yeah, we can see that user A and B has been added. So that was our target and the target is fulfilled. Uh, in the same way, you can uh, you can actually edit, uh, uh, you can actually edit or reconfigure the MySQL query rules. And now let's uh, reconfigure the these variables. So yes, in this YAML, uh, you can see that as for the admin variables, there shouldn't be something like add or delete or something like the variables are fixed. So you just want a new configuration. So there's no need to mention the update or add or delete anything. Just uh, mention whatever configuration you need under the corresponding field and the proxy school would, uh, and the QDB operator would eventually uh, propagate it to the proxy school server. So, okay, before actually applying the uh, reconfigure variables, uh, let's see what is the current configuration. Uh, uh, okay, so these are the four variables actually I want to edit. So let's see, I have written the query down before. Okay, so you can see the current values as for the my admin refresh interval 2050 admin cluster check interval 200 the this mysql variable and this mysql variable you can see all the values now let's apply the off request so this is the off request uh, there are some changes so now let's apply 
from big bars. Okay, so update bar is successful. Let's uh, let's check. Mm, let's check uh, first for the for this. So yeah, you can see that this has been updated from two zero five zero to two zero five five. Uh, and then cluster L check this has been updated to 200 to 205 and this has been also updated you can see and this has been updated as well so uh, yes the reconfigure uh, variables is also working fine so so actually in this way or in this manner you can uh, uh, you can reconfigure any variable or any table you want which you can whichever you can uh, configure from the from the yaml so only the mysql user mysql variable mysql query rule and admin variables okay this was, this was the reconfigure tls uh, reconfigure uh, reconfigure op request and the final one is the horizontal scaling. So you can see the pattern here, uh, how you should uh, mention the, or how you should come up with the horizontal scaling spec, or horizontal scaling YAML. And from the name horizontal scaling, uh, maybe you were understanding what's, uh, what's gonna, what we are go going to do. Like we have, uh, we want high availability. Like we have three node proxy SQL cluster. We want to upgrade it to or upscale it to uh, five member proxy SQL cluster. Or we have a five member proxy SQL server. We want to scale down it to four member proxy SQL cluster. So with horizontal scaling of request, you can do all this. So before applying the request, let me check the current state. So proxy scale. Okay, currently we can see that we only have three node and and here you can see only three ports. Um, let's apply this, this scale up. Okay, this is progressing, you can see that uh, one by one ports are coming up. Okay. And let's wait. Okay. Now you can see that we are uh, we are no longer three member uh, proxy school cluster. We are now five member proxy school cluster. And in the proxy school server table, you can see the uh, changes. Uh, the it has it has already reflected the change. And now let's do the scale down. Okay, the scale down is in progressing. You can see one node is uh, terminating. The proxy scale server is in critical situation. So it would uh, eventually get ready in a few minutes. And uh, meanwhile, I wanna mention one thing that uh, you can see that we have changed some values or some configurations from the op request or with the op request. Uh, when the obsec when we change any values from the obsec request, the configuration secret would also be changed. Let's uh, see this. Okay, see view secret. So as for the MySQL Max HTMC uh, HTMC TS per connection, it is set to nineteen. It was set twenty. Uh, it was set to twenty before the obsec request. So the configuration. Uh, secret would also uh, be in 20 before and after the obsequies it should be 19. So yes, we can see that changes are reflected in the secrets as well. So one thing I want to mention again that this configuration file is the source of truth for these, these five fields or these five keys of proxy school configuration. So any changes to the obsequies or bootstrapping to the yaml bootstrapping to the secret 
everything would be reflected or everything would be in this uh, particular secret, this particular configuration secret always. Okay, so now let's check it again. And we can see that our proxy SQL cluster has scaled down. So, okay, that was it for me. Uh, that was it for today's webinar. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Uh, you can ask in the Zoom chat or you can ask here in the live session, whatever you feel comfortable with. As we have seen, there have no question yet. So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Visit appscode.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day. Thank you.